Good evening. This is Patrick Cowdery, and uh, we're bringing you a little presentation tonight, uh, doing a little video. First video we've done, and this is called uh, The Miracle on Elk Street, and it relates a true story that was told to me by a good friend of mine, Lionel Nightingale. He's a fellow Christian, and he's my music teacher, and we've traveled many miles together over the years, and uh, I'm just going to tell you something that uh, Lionel is... He doesn't make stuff up. He's honest to a fault. He's a great guy to know, and I want him to tell you tonight um, of a miracle that he was uh, around and present for, and uh, uh, should be very interesting and should strengthen the faith of Christians and maybe open the eyes of those who are curious. Lionel, could you step up and, and join me and just let me introduce you? Okay. And this is Lionel Nightingale, my one of my just dearest friends in all of life and he's a, a great guy to know and he's, uh, he's my music teacher, my music guru, although he probably <laughs> won't accept the term guru, but but he's a Christian man and he, he's, he doesn't make stuff up. I'm, I'm repeating myself. Lionel, uh, I want you to tell us a story tonight about your friend Otto Allen. Sure. And uh, this is for people that love the Lord and um, do you think you could start off by playing us a little something? things there's, that you can't really explain, but it happened. It's one of those things that you know that happened because you were there. I was there, and uh, I knew Otto Ellen quite well, and Otto was my age, basically, and he had a past in the military, and he was the type of man that was believable. He was just a likable guy and a believable. He had begun to act a little strange. I had entered into a relationship with him, <coughs> excuse me, where I was teaching him piano lessons and he was teaching me about electronic things, including ham radio. And so we got along fine. I'd go over to his apartment and we'd do one session with the ham radio. The next session would be a piano lesson and we'd kind of or once in a while we'd split it up. 
But anyways, we went along. Uh, he started acting a little bit strange. That is, he would look at me with a very strange look, which I didn't understand. And he, it was, there was like something he wanted to tell me, yet he didn't really say too much. And this went on for a while. And I'm really noticing this. And so I said a few things. And finally, it just sort of came out. Basically, that's what happened. And he explained something that happened to him at that apartment on Elk Street. Now, he couldn't explain to you why it happened. He was not a Christian man, and yet what happened to him could be understood by any Christian, the basis of it. So as he shook and shuddered and he began to tell me, and he was apologetic, but he says, I know you might not believe this, but here's what took place. And what began to be explained by him was, was kind of incredible. So he was telling me that, and I don't know how long it was before he told me it wasn't too terribly long, but he was telling me about being in bed and... Uh, becoming uneasy in his sleep. His dog was growling. He had a, I don't know whether he was half or all German Shepherd. Dog's name was, uh, I can't remember now who's Hans and who's Fritz. He had a cat and a dog. Which one do you call Hans and which one do you call Fritz? I'll let you figure that out. But the dog was probably Hans and the cat was Fritz, I guess. I don't know. But the, the animals were a little bit uneasy, and the dog began to growl a little bit. And, and he was, when he was telling me this, you know, he was, he looked at first a little uncomfortable, but he was very believable. So he told me that in the middle of the night, as the dogs were, the dog was growling, and so forth and so on, he began to notice that the room was starting to light up from one corner of the room, which him, having a very scientific mind, he could offer no explanation as to what was going on. So he said, Lionel, he said, I don't know how to tell you this. And I knew he was telling me the truth because he just, he couldn't have put on a, the kind of a show he did. And it was a very emotional thing he started to tell me. But he said, light began to emanate from right in one of the corners of the room. And, and, and he said, as this light began to grow and emanate from the corner of the room, it got brighter and brighter. In fact, it became as bright as a person wanted. I mean, you could read a newspaper by it. It was so bright in the room. And as this brilliance grew, in the corner of the room, this brilliance contained the form of of a human figure that was that had formed and he literally shook pretty bad when he told me about this and and I said what and he says yeah he said I, I don't know how else to tell you this he says that and I know it sounds incredible but this is the way it happened to me so he watched this light grow he watched this being form right in the corner of the room and and of course, no need telling you that he was getting more emotional as he went along. It was, it was difficult for him to, to speak. But when the light had kind of peaked out and reached an apex or whatever you call it, he, he said the being spoke to him, called him son or son of man. I don't remember just what it was, but that things were going to be revealed to him that were necessary for him in this life and told him not to be afraid, do not fear. Well, anyway, this being pointed to what was the wall of that bedroom, actually it was a bedroom kind of a, and of course a basic room, it wasn't a big apartment, so he had this room that was a very basic room and he, he pointed, the being pointed to the wall and when he did, the wall just 
basically just evaporated. And there was the country out there, who knows where it was. It was not the countryside of his house. It was some beautiful countryside, which he doesn't know where it was. I don't know where it was. But the being told him not to be afraid, but to follow him and he would let him know what had to happen in time to come. And so listen and learn, this being told him. And so he's telling me this, of course, with a lot of emotion and I'm listening to it and I'm saying, what am I going to hear? I mean, what, what is this? So the, the wall just literally went away and it was just like a bright summer afternoon. And so anyway, this being said to follow him. So he followed the being out of the room. There was a path there. And he said, I didn't have any idea on what was going on. He says, it just didn't make any sense. But yet it was there as real as could be. He said, there was nothing that was imaginatory about it. He says, it was real. So he, there was this trail or pathway and he's following this being and uh, walking along the countryside. And then he noticed off in the distance that there was like a, like a hill. And there was a figure that was placed on this hill side. And uh, he was getting very, very demonstrative about what he was saying. And sometimes he had to stop and it was just difficult for him to speak of this, but he said, I don't know how to tell you this, but he said, when I looked and saw that being, he was not a Christian man, but he says it's the being that I know now, and even then knew that it had to be the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, but you were aware of that? Oh, yes. Uh, well, uh, the being that was with him told him to approach the being that approached the hill and approached the being that was on the hill. So this he did. He walked just up towards the hill. Evidently it wasn't a very large, huge hill, but the being was standing there on the side of the hill. And so he walked up to the being weakly and he says as he approached this being he began to feel very unclean and he just had this tremendous feeling of of uh, being dirty next to this being. He'd had a history in the military and what have you. And he said thoughts started coming back to him about his life in the military. And he didn't want to go into that right then, but he said, I'll tell you why. He said, I don't know how to describe. He said, now that I know, I knew then. And then he says, and I knew from then on afterwards that this was the person we call the Lord Jesus Christ. So this Lord spoke softly to him and told him to come near him but not to be afraid so he walked right directly up to this being that he knew was the Lord which he had no way of knowing why he knew that and so he said I felt so very unclean and he explained to me about how unclean he felt and this part was difficult for him because it he really got quite emotional on, on this subject. <clears throat> so anyway, just out of nowhere, there was a golden goblet that formed in the Lord's hand, and he had it in his hand. And the Lord had asked him if he knew what this goblet was, and he said, no, sir, I, I don't know. He said, this, in this goblet, he said, is your life that was. And he said, your life that was full of sin is right here. And he, and he was very ashamed, you know, he wanted to, he said he just wanted to kind of fall down. And, and uh, I think he told me that he got down on his knees. I can't remember how he said it, but we'll just leave that part be. But here he is and he's shaking in the presence of the Lord. And he said, the being told him, said, observe what I am now doing. And he held out this golden goblet. And he said he could smell the stench of it just right from where he was. 
and it just made him sick. The Lord says, everything that is you and what you were and are, he said, is in this goblin. And then he said he watched him and he, he, he moved the goblet close to his mouth like this. Then he opened his mouth and he drank all this pukey, filthy substance that was in this goblet. Drank it into his being. He said, <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how to describe him telling it or, but it was, I mean, what can I say? So anyway, he said, you've taken my sinful life and, and my sins and, and, and you've taken them in your own body. The Lord nodded his head to him. And that's exactly what was going on. So he says, yes, I, I do take everything that is you into my body that was you. And, and, and he, he drank this filthy goblet. And so, you know, he, it was very vivid. The picture was very vivid of the Lord taking what was the essence of a sinful man into himself. Well, pretty hard to understand that but I mean emotionally it was easy to receive I could receive what was going on there and Otto uh, this was so dramatic for him it's hard to describe but the man literally came unglued and uh, anyway the Lord did this thing and uh, drank every drop of it took it on himself and so there were, was some exchange of words and the Lord asked him about himself and how he felt and I can't remember the exact words but it was very definitely a conversion experience that was happening right there on that hillside. So this went on for some time and uh, I wish I had time to relate this whole subject. It's coming back to my mind as I saw Otto when he told me this, but there's no way the man could have faked this. It was just real. So anyway, at the end of that, he told the Lord he felt clean. He, he told, told, told the Lord he felt totally clean. And uh, thank you, thank you, Lord. For, and then he knew this was his sins. And he says, thank you for taking my sin upon yourself. And, and consuming it and he just was so thankful it was hard to and he's showing me some of this thanks and and he's crying and uh, carrying on and, and and but but it was very emotional so i mean you know this was the first part of what he experienced so anyway uh, he had referred to him a little differently from this point on which i won't go into that except that it now sounded like he referred to him as a brother in some way. I don't know, know how I even could understand that, and I can't remember the exact words, but there was a difference in what the Lord was doing now, referring to him as his brother. And anyway, they walked on this path, <clears throat> and uh, he began to show him things. He showed him things that were darkly. He showed him uh, a, a river which I do not, I, I mean, I didn't see this river literally, but to hear him tell of it, it sounded to me like uh, the river of life, you know, and showed there was a big golden glow in the sky, which uh, I could only think of uh, the city of God, you know, being out there somewhere. And, and so the Lord was showing him literally, it could say heaven and hell, I don't know how to say it, uh, but yet it was there and I, I don't, I wished I could see it again. Guys, I, I, I wished I could see it again. But anyway, this was the heart of the subject. This was the thing that I remember most dramatically, and I, this is going back now, we're going back into the 70s. Uh, there'll be more information on that, and maybe they can include something in this uh, video about that, but this was quite a few years ago. 
And I was born in 1937, and I think Otto was pretty close to me, 37, 38, somewhere in there. And so now I know how long ago it was. And there were things that he was telling me, which I will eliminate at this point. But this was the center of what Otto had to say, was the conversion. It, it had totally changed his life. After this happened, well, I'll just continue on with as much there was talk about what he saw, which was remarkable indeed, you know, but, but yet the most remarkable part being this, being the transformation of this man right there and the Lord himself involving Otto in this transformation the way he did. So he followed this, this being, which... Uh, we called the angel earlier back to his room uh, it suddenly appeared and he walked right back into the room um, the wall appeared it was just like before he told me there it was basically between two and three hours that he was gone to see everything and, and witness everything that had happened to him so anyway the being went back into that beam of light and the beam of light just kind of faded out and he was left there in the dark the way that it started. It's a pretty remarkable thing to hear this so I'm sorry I, might, I sound so I was blown away by this experience but and I'll say that I, I can't think of a more real thing I've ever been involved in. Uh, the man was real in, 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 in every way his life began to change. Uh, he began to talk about the Lord constantly. He worked at uh, Channel 10 TV. He was under Alice Feinstein. He had to do with the maintenance of Channel 10 TV. He went up there quite a bit. So his uh, story about the Lord, he didn't relate this story, but he just told him that he had found the Lord and that the Lord had changed his life. Some people received it, some didn't. So that's what his life amounted to, was the reception of the Lord and the total change that came over him. This went on and on. Well, it didn't last forever, and I can't tell you now, I didn't, uh, it wasn't forever because I would begin to tell me that he wouldn't be with me very much longer and that he would be leaving this world. And I thought, what, you know, tell me that. Well, <clears throat> just a day or two, Later, he basically said goodbye to me in one of our meetings that we were having, and, and it was so matter of fact, I'm saying, well, now what are you telling me here? I'm not going to see you anymore. Well, anyway, I said, well, if that's the way it has to be, that's the way it is. Anyway, he never showed up at Channel 10 TV the next, uh, the next day. He just didn't show up. Anyway, Channel 10 sent somebody out there and the dog was barking. And, uh, anyway, there was noises. It's his shade of his, which he'd open early in the morning. Usually it was still closed. And he was in the house, uh, but his, his, his pickup was there. He was there, but obviously, but he hadn't come to the door. When he wouldn't come to the door after they knocked and knocked and knocked, they broke the door down, they entered the, they entered his room, his bedroom, and they found him sprawled out on his bed, so they rushed him to the hospital. They could find no physical evidence as to why he should be dead, why that he should be dead at all. But he told me this, I heard him say, and he said it without any emotion, that he would be gone. And I, I never have understood to this day why the Lord took him, but the way it happened and he knew it he said that I will be gone and I won't be seeing you again um, you know until the next life I never understood that I still don't understand it because they did an autopsy on him they could find absolutely nothing that was the matter with the guy and my friend uh, Otto I think I told you about it sometime earlier than I don't remember what I first told you about it Otto but uh Oh, I'm not calling you on it, but when did I first tell you about this, uh, Patrick? Probably 
15 years ago. We should have done this video a long time ago, but yeah. I think it must have been 15 years ago. And, and I've asked you to tell the story a time or two, and we've done it off record, and so now we're getting it on the record. And, and uh, I think probably about that time frame. Okay. Well, anyway, it was absolutely amazing when I found out that he had died. Then when I heard that they could not, and they did many tests, they could not find anything physically wrong with him. That was strange. He had a mother that survived. Uh, she was up in Klamath Falls and a sister, I think. Uh, they were very surprised that he would die. Nobody really understood that death. He was about how old? He was, well, um, you would ask me, and I told you I couldn't Maybe remember. He must have been 37 or something. Yeah, that sounds right. Because you gave the yeah. date of his death of February uh, 14, 1974. Well, that's correct, because we got the information. Well, anyway, this story, everything that I know about it, it is true. I can't tell you anything more than that. I saw the man when he told it. I saw him. I saw what he did to tell it. It was very difficult for him. It wasn't some story he made up to tickle my ears, I'll tell you. You said that he was trembling as he said it, and oh, yeah. it wasn't enough of an actor oh, no. to fake that. Yeah. So I'm glad to be able to share this with you, and there were many things, but, and I'm sure I'm leaving some things out, but that's okay. You get the gist of the story. Here was a man that was a natural man, born on earth, like all the rest of us, and who was regenerated and became related to the Lord. Just before he got back to his house, he was a Christian, and his whole life changed. Thank you. Mm-hmm.